All right, class. Um, <clears throat> so in this video, we are going to be looking at uh, what is the probability of uh, finding a certain sample mean given you know some something already about the underlying population. Okay. So <clears throat> to kind of start off, uh, let's say okay, here's our population, and uh, we somehow we know that for this population they spend, uh, and this number I actually looked up, uh, so on average in the United States we spend 135 minutes per day on social media of one form or another. Um, and then the standard deviation for that, and this one I couldn't find an exact value for so I just made up a number, let's say the standard deviation is 12 minutes per day. Okay, um, Probably is a little bit bigger than that, but I just we're just making numbers up right now, so that's what we're going to use. Um, so the first one is actually accurate, uh, on average, 135 minutes per day on different forms of social media. And then I just made up that the standard deviation for this population is 12 minutes per day. Um, and let's say that we don't know what the shape of this actual distribution is, right? We just have this data. We calculated an average. We calculated uh, the standard deviation, uh, but we're, you know, maybe it's a little skewed. Uh, it's not perfectly normal, so what do we do, right? Can we use um, all of our cool tricks with normal distributions on something that, that looks like this? Um, and the answer is uh, not directly, uh, but there is a way to kind of skirt around that. Uh, and it, uh, this is uh, it's an application of the central limit theorem, uh, something that we've been uh, reading a little bit about. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but what we can do is we can say, hey, so I don't know the shape of the distribution, uh, but what I can do is uh, there's this, okay, so there's this thing called the sampling distribution of means. And the way that it works is, so here's my original population of all the adults in the United States, right? All of these people in here. And so let's say we reach in and we take a sample. I sample, randomly sample, pull out all these people, so here's one sample. And I do it again. I go through and I sample again, and I get a green sample. And I go through and I sample again, and I have this black sample. And I go through and I sample again, and now I have a yellow sample. Okay. And then, and then what I want to do is I want to calculate an average for each of my samples. So let's say that the average of the first one is 130. The average of the second one is 145. The average of this one is 132. The average of this one is... I don't know, 115. Um, so notice that, that I'm getting all different values for these averages, which is totally fine, right? If you reach into a population and take a sample, even if it's a random sample, the average of that random sample isn't going to be exactly the average of um, the population. Uh, very rarely will it be exactly the average of the population. Okay, so if that's the case, and thinking about what it means for us to be taking samples and and then using those samples to make claims about the population that sits behind the sample, right? If I use this one, if this was my sample, and if I know that this is the actual value, and I said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to say that the average amount of time spent on social media is 115 minutes when really it's 135 minutes, right? My, uh, the, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a projection that's really pretty low. Um, not a great projection, uh, but what the sampling distribution of means says is that, okay, so I've taken four samples here. Well, let's, let's say I sampled it again and again and again and again and again and again for infinity. Let's say I took an infinite number of samples, okay? So if I have an infinite number of samples, then I, I, I kind of almost have an infinite number of possibilities of sample averages that I could calculate from that infinite number of samples, even if they're all random, right? If I if I'm drawing from an infinite population, then I have a chance of getting almost anything. Uh, anyways, if I calculate the average, the average number for every single one of those samples, and then if I collect all of these averages and plot them in their own distribution, that distribution will be normal in shape every single time. Okay? Uh, and so that's kind of the really important part of all of this. Okay, well, not every single time. It depends on actually how big the sample is, right? Because these could be samples of 100. Uh, 
So I'd, so every one of these would represent a sample that's size 100. But if I was only taking a sample size of 2, uh, then the chances of me getting a normal distribution with me just taking sample sizes of 2 is much, much less, almost 0. So what's the magic number? What's the magic size of a sample that you probably want? Well, if you look at the book, the book says, hey, you need a sample of a size at least 30 in order to make a claim, any claim at all, that the distribution of the sample means is going to be normal. Okay, and that's what we're looking at here. This is, uh, this thing here, this is not the distribution of the population. It's, this is the distribution of all of these averages uh, or all of these means that I've taken from sampling the population an infinite number of times. Uh, and, and really, like, who has the time? Nobody's ever going to sample a population an infinite number of times. We don't have that kind of time. We don't have that kind of money. Uh, so this is, it, it is a little bit of a theoretical construct, but operating within theory, we know that as long as our sample size is close to 30, uh, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normal. And so now we can apply all of our cool stuff. The other thing that it says is that the average of the sample, so this is the sampling distribution of means. The average of this thing will always be the average of the population it came from. So it's going to be 135. Okay, um, and now I can ask some really cool questions. Uh, so, okay, right, this is this sampling distribution of means. So the average of the sampling distribution of means, so notice I have this weird symbol with this X bar, is always going to be equal to that of the population. So this is going to be 135 minutes per day. Uh, and then the standard deviation of the thing, so now this is where, so the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, or sometimes this is referred to as the standard error, uh, this we have to calculate. To find this, I have to take the standard deviation of the population and divide that by the square root of my sample size. Okay, And then whatever that number is, uh, that's what I use. So there's a little bit of the theory behind like what's going to drive the rest of me being, to, being able to answer this question. And the important thing here class is that this distribution is the distribution of the sample means of a fake infinite number of samples, not the distribution of the population. The distribution of the population may be something funky looking like that. I'm looking at here the distribution of sample means of the population. Okay, uh, That's a really important distinction. So let me clear this uh, for a second and then and then okay so here's my population so now let's say so thinking of all that let's say that I actually reach in and I take a sample and let's say that uh, the size of my sample is 41 so n equals 41 so I'm above 30 so I can the central limit theorem will apply here and I can use the sampling distribution of means um, so um, here's my thing and my average is something uh, I, I for somehow I already know that the average of the population. So this is the okay. I should this is just a sample. This is x bar, right? X bar is something. The average of the population I know is uh, what did I say? 135, 135 minutes per day of social media with a standard deviation of 12 uh, minutes per day. <coughs> so. Now here's, we, now here's where we can get into the meat of the question. Uh, first, can I use the central limit theorem and you know imagine that the sampling distribution of means is normally distributed and the question and the answer is yes, right? That's greater than 30. Check. Okay, so now um, oftentimes questions will ask, well, what are your chances? So this sample that you took that had 41 people in it, what are the chances of this sample uh, having an average between, so what are the chances of having an average between 120 and 150 minutes? Okay, 
what are the chances of me or how many of the samples uh, if I'm sampling at a sample size of 41, we'll have an average between 120 and 150 minutes. And again, right, this is this is all assuming that when we take random samples, that we we're never going to get the exact average of the population. Hopefully, we get close. So I want to know well how many sample averages uh, are you know if I'm taking a sample size of 41 are between 120 and 150. So let's figure that out. Okay, so here's the distribution of the sample means where the average of the sample mean distribution is 135, right? Because it's always the same as the population. And the standard deviation of this thing, or the standard error, this one we have to calculate. So the standard error of the, or the, the, the standard deviation of the uh, sampling distribution of means is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So for us, this is going to be 12 divided by the square root of 41. And get our trusty calculators out. So 12 divided by the square root of 41. This is 1.874. One point eight seven four. Okay, so we've calculated that value. So now I basically have everything I need to go back and apply everything that I know about um, the normal curve. So 120 is going to be somewhere over here. So let's say that that's 120. 150 is going to be somewhere over here. So it's asking, what are the what are the chances or what's the probability of me getting a sample, uh, drawing a sample that's between 120 and 150? So it wants to know what's the area between 120 and 150. Well, as long as this is a normal curve and I can make that assumption, um, then I'm just, then I need z scores. And so z is going to be x minus mu x hat over this thing, the standard error. And so for 120, this is going to be 120 minus 135 divided by 1.874 and then the other one is going to be 150 minus 135 divided by 1.874 and let's run these into a into my calculator and find out what these values are minus 135 divided by 1.874 Okay, so this, <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> oh, I picked bad numbers. Um, this is going to be minus 8.0042 as a z score. <laughs> that's not good. Okay, let's look at the other one. 150 minus 135 uh, divided, oh, this is going to be bad too, 1.874. Um, and so this is uh, 8.0042. Okay. Now, let me try and explain to you why these numbers are the worst numbers ever. Um, if you have a normal distribution, here's the middle, uh, z-score of zero, here's one standard deviation, here's two standard deviations, here's three standard deviations. So here's one, two, and three. And, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three. Um, the empirical rule tells us that between three, negative three and three, this is 99.4. Uh, 99 point something, 99.4-ish percent uh, of the entire uh, population is in between minus 3 and plus 3 standard deviations. So if my thing is telling me to look between minus 8, yeah, I guess I'll, let me do this in green, minus 8, which is going to be way out here, right, even for, and over here, positive 8, Right, that's basically the entire distribution. 
So this answer is essentially going to be 100%, right? 100% of the values uh, exist between 120 and 150. So essentially what that's saying is, is that saying that basically no one spends less time than 120 uh, minutes uh, in social media. And basically no one spends um, uh, more, uh, or ba and I, then basically everyone spends at least 150 minutes uh, on social media. Um, so 100% of my population exists between 120 and 150, approximately, right? It'd be like 99.9999999991, something like that, something ridiculous. Uh, so um, this goes to show that before you run an example, you really should test your numbers. Uh, and so <laughs> I... Uh, but there was a learning moment there, right? Because we got to see those ridiculously large standard deviations that are unrealistic. So uh, I'm going to change a number in our thing. I'm going to say that the, because again, remember I said that this is the number I made up. Let's pretend that the standard deviation is actually 80 minutes per day. Okay, so making that little adjustment, that's going to change this is going to end up being 120 minus 135 and then 150 minus 135 um, divided by divided by okay I need to calculate a new standard error so this is going to be 80 divided by the square root of 41 80 divided by the square root just more practice right it's all good 41. So now I have 12.49. So this is a made up number that is much better. 12.49. Uh, 12.49 is going to be the divisor down there now. Okay, so this is going to be lots better. So this now is negative 1.209. And on the other side, this is 1.2009. So that's nice. Uh, I drew these in different places, but they're actually equidistant <laughs> from the uh, from the average of this uh, system here. Um, okay, so to finish this problem, uh, we are going to. Um, go to our tables. And now with our tables, we can actually find values that make sense. Um, so let's hop on over. Uh, first one is the positive one. So 1.2009 is the value we want. So I'm going to come down to here. Here's 1.2. That's not 1.20 or 1 or 2. Well, I guess actually it is, isn't it? if all I have, if all I can go out to is this, all I can go out to is this value here. So this would round this up to be 1.201, but that's still, right, based on the accuracy of my table, that's still just 1.20, so it is this value right here. So what that's saying is that, here's the z-score, that to the left of the z-score of 1.201, is approximately 0 0.8849. Uh, that's the proportion of the area that's to the left of that, right? The percent would be 88.49%.
Um, so let's hop back. So this is um, 0 0.8849. 8849 is that proportion that's to the left. So if I were to draw this out, it would be like this part, all of that. And I don't want all of it, so I need to find out, okay, what's this thing? Um, so now I'm looking at negative 1.2009 or negative 1.201, which is still, right, this is as accurate as I can get based on my table. So here's negative 1.2 right here. And I want negative 1.20, so this number. So 0 0.1151. Um, 0 0.1151, 0 0.1151. So if I draw this in red, that's this value right here. Okay, so to find the thing in the middle, which is what I want, I need to subtract the two values, right? So I'm gonna take 0 0.8849, and I'm going to subtract from it um, the 0 0.1151. Okay, so let me grab my calculator and run that calculation. Hello, Ezra. And this is 0 0.8849 minus... 0 0.1151 gives me that the value of this thing in the between is 0 0.7698, or what it's saying is that based on this data, I have a 76.98% chance of, um, of drawing a sample that has a value between 120 and 150 from this population, right? You have a seven, basically a 77% chance of drawing a random sample of size 41 from this population that, uh, if you're looking between the values of 120 and 150. So that is how you work with that. So really the biggest change we're making here is that, I guess number one, we need to check the sample size. And then number two is we need to look at the standard error or the, or the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means, okay? So, now let's see. Oh, so one last thing that they could ask with a problem like this, and this is important, is, um, what if they asked, uh, let me clear all of this. So here's our thing. The average is still 135. I changed um, the standard deviation to be 12. Uh, I shouldn't have deleted uh, 12 divided by the square root of 41 is so this thing is 1.874, the standard error. Okay, what if they said, hey, uh, what is the value, what is, what is the value of the, um, what is the value of, What is the value of <laughs> my little boys up here playing with his trucks right now? <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, what is the value of the sample that, that's at the 80th percentile? Okay, so if this is, oh, that is the worst normal curve. If, if this is my normal curve, um, when if they ask about the 80th percentile, what they're saying is what z-score has 80% of the data to the left of it, okay? Right, that would be the value that's at the 80th percentile. So if I'm looking at my, uh, 
a distribution of sample means. I want to know what sample is at the 80th percentile. Uh, then, so this is a little bit of backwards thinking, okay? I know that this has a positive score, right? Because the mean here uh, is at 50 percent, and so I know the z-score is going to be positive. So I need to run over here, and essentially what I'm looking for is what value is 0, oh, what value is 0 0.80, 0, okay? Um, and not z-score, not what z-score is 0 0.80, but inside of here of these things, which one of those is 0 0.8, okay? Um, so to find that, oh shoot, that just deleted my table. Uh, let me get the table back. Okay, erase this by hand. Um, okay, so I'm going to run around down here and I'm going to find, so it looks like, oh, this is funny. It's in here. So, <laughs> so look, here's 0 0.7995 and here's 0 0.8023. So, right, 0 0.7995, that basically rounds up to 0 0.80, right? I, I can't imagine being able to get any closer to that. So now if I say, okay, so what z-score correlates with uh, this uh, proportion? Well, it just so happens, uh, and this, it, this is not typical, uh, that it's 0 0.8, and then I, I want to run up here, to find the other number, 4, okay? So a z-score of 0 0.84 is at the 80th percentile. So if I run back here, so I know now that the z-score of 0 0.84, that's at the 80th percentile. Um, well, what value does this track back to uh, in the actual, uh, okay, not in the actual population, excuse me. Uh, what value does this track back to in the sampling distribution of means? So what sample average is at the 80th percentile? So for this, get your z-score equation out. So z equals x minus uh, mu over, uh, and then for us, we're going to be using these ones, right? So to figure this out, so I know the z-score is 0 0.84 is going to equal x, the value I'm interested in, Oops. Minus um, the mean, so 135, divided by the standard error, which is 1.874. Okay, so to finish this off, multiply each side by 1.874. So 0 0.84 times 1.874 equals 1.57. 416 equals x minus 135. Add the 135 over. So the, and this is a sample, this is a sample average. The sample average, the sample average that's at the 80th percentile is 136.5 minutes per day of social media. Uh, and so what that's telling you is that, um, 80% of the times spent on social media are less than uh, 136.5 minutes per day. Okay, so again, 80th percentile correlates to 0.8 in my proportion chart. I use that, track it back to a z-score, and then take my z-score and back calculate it out to a sample average value from the sampling distribution of means. Okay, that's a lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this and uh, good luck.